So we've had a warning this week that it could take 10 years to do a trade deal with the EU after Brexit, though many people doubted that. But could opportunities to expand trade lie elsewhere? Australia was once the first uh, country to indicate its willingness to do a deal with the UK. And now its High Commissioner in London has told us that life outside the EU, quote, won't be as hard as people say. He made this exclusive film for the Sunday Politics. My father was the Australian High Commissioner in the early 70s when the UK joined the European Union or the EEC as it was called. Now I'm in the job, the UK is leaving. Australia supported Britain remaining a member of the European Union but we respect the decision that the British made in the referendum. Now that the decision has been made we hope that Britain will get on with the process of negotiating their exit from the European Union and making the most of the opportunities that are presented to them. Following the referendum decision, Australia approached the British government with a proposal. We offered, when the time was right, to negotiate a free trade agreement. That initiative was well received. The British and Australian governments have already established a working group to explore a future ambitious trade agreement once the UK has left the EU. Morning everyone. Great news about the cricket. A free trade agreement would provide great opportunities for consumers of both our countries. Australian consumers could purchase British made cars for less and we'd buy more of them. We'd give British households access to cheaper, fresher food all year round. Our summer is during your winter so Australia can provide British households with fresh produce when the equivalent British or European product is out of season and Australian households would have access to British products when it's in season. Free trade agreements are also about investment. The UK is the second largest source of foreign investment in Australia. By the way, Australia also invests over £200 billion in the UK. So a free trade agreement would stimulate investment, creating more jobs. But by the way, free trade agreements are not just about trade and investment, they're also about geopolitics. Countries with good trade relations often work more closely together in other fields, including security, the spread of democracy and human rights. It's not as hard as some people say. We may have preferred the UK remain in the EU, but life outside, as we know, can be pretty good. We've negotiated eight free trade agreements over the last 12 years, including a free trade agreement with the United States, which took us 15 months. This is one of the reasons why the Australian economy has continued to grow over the last 25 years, and we, of course, are not in the European Union. Australia welcomes Theresa May's vision for the UK to become a global champion of free trade. We're willing to help in any way we can. And Alexander Downer joins me now. Welcome to the Sunday Politics High Commissioner. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, the Australian government says it wants to negotiate an important trade deal with the UK as efficiently and promptly as possible when Brexit is complete. How prompt is prompt? Well, there are legal issues, obviously. The UK, for as long as it remains in the EU, can't negotiate individual trade deals, but once it leaves, it can. So at this stage, we say that we'll um, negotiate a free trade agreement with the UK when the time is right. That's the formula we use, by which we mean we can do some preliminary examination. You talk now about the parameters of it. Uh, we're certainly talking already. We've set up a working, joint working group with the British government, and we're just having a look at the issues, scoping the issues and trying to, understand, trying to understand what questions will arise in uh, any negotiation. But, of course, we can't have formally any negotiation. Until the country until, is out. Until and leave, yeah. 
Why is there no free trade deal between Australia and the European Union? Well, it's a long and tortuous story, the story of the trade relations with the <coughs> European Union. Oh, basically, Australian agriculture is um, either banned or hugely restricted in terms of its access to the European Union. So we see the European Union, by the way, Australians see it as a pretty protectionist sort of uh, um, organisation. Now, we are doing um, a scoping study on a free trade agreement with the European Union. We hope that during the course of next year, we can enter into negotiations with them, but we have no illusions this would be a very difficult negotiation, but one we're giving substantial priority to. Is there not a danger that when Britain leaves the EU, that the EU will become more protectionist, because this country has always been the most powerful voice for free trade? Well, I, don't, I hope that won't happen, but, um, but what I'd say is this, the reason why we wanted Britain to remain in the European Union is because it brought to the ta one of the reasons it brought to the table the whole free trade mentality which has been a historic part of Britain's approach to international relations so without the UK in the European Union you'll lose that I mean it's a very loud voice of course in the European Union so you will lose that voice that's going to be a disadvantage the figure that jumped out at me in the film was that it took Australia it it took you only 15 months to negotiate a free trade deal with the United States. Yes, well the thing is it's about political will. Um, a free trade agreement is going to be no problem unless you want, um, <coughs> an, unless you want to protect particular sectors of your economy. Yeah. Now in that particular case there was one sector the Americans oh. insisted on protecting and that was their sugar industry. In the end, after 15 months of negotiation, um, two relatively free trading countries, we had fixed up everything, but um, uh, we had to answer the question, would we go ahead with this free trade agreement without sugar? And we decided that we would do that. But other than that, it was relatively easy to negotiate because we're both free trade countries. So with the UK, um, I don't think, you, you can't be sure, mm. but I don't think a free trade agreement would take very long to negotiate with the UK because the UK wouldn't want to put a lot of obstacles in the way to Australia and we were certainly, you know, not to give away our hand, <laughs> but we wouldn't want to put a lot of obstacles in the way to uh, British exports. The trend in recent years on trade has been to do big regional trade deals, <clears throat> but President-elect Trump has now pretty made clear that the Pacific trade arrangement deal is dead. Uh, it looks like the transatlantic trade deal is almost dead as well. The American election put a nail in the coffin. The French elections could put another nail in the coffin. It could be over. Are we returning to a world of bilateral trade deals? It's country with country rather than regional blocks. Not necessarily. I think in, in the Asia Pacific's case, we'll continue to look at uh, plurilateral or multilateral trade arrangements. And even if uh, the Trans Pacific Partnership isn't ratified by the Americans, we nevertheless have other options there. Uh, however, our approach has always been this. The ultimate would be free trade throughout the world through the WTO. That's proving pretty hard to achieve, of course. Mm. Secondly, um, if we can get a lot of countries engaged in a free trade negotiation, that's also pretty good if it's possible, but it's always more difficult. But um, we do bilateral free trade agreements as well. We have one with China, with Japan, with the United States, Singapore, mm. Thailand, so the list goes on. And they have been hugely beneficial to Australia, those bilateral free trade agreements, so let, it can work. Let me ask you this, because Australia, you've been dealing with the EU to do a free trade deal. What lessons are there there? How quickly do you think could Britain do a free trade deal with the EU if we leave the single market? Well, um, there, there's a completely different concept involved in the case of Britain mm -hmm. and the EU, and that is, at the moment, there are no restrictions on trade. So you and the EU would be talking about whether you're going to erect barriers to trade. Now, we're outsiders. We don't get too much involved mm -hmm. in this debate except to say this. We don't want to see mm -hmm. the global trade system disrupted by the erection of tariff barriers between the United Kingdom, the fifth biggest economy in the world, and the European Union. So our expectation is that not just the British, but the Europeans will try to make the transition to Brexit as smooth as possible in okay. every possible way, but particularly commercially. Let me slip in one more, just a yes or no if you can. If Britain and Australia do a free trade agreement, 
Would it be possible that that would include free movements of the Australian and the British people? <laughs> well, I think we'd probably stick with our present non-discriminatory immigration uh, system. Australia does not discriminate against any country. Of course, the European Union's free movement means that you discriminate against so non-European citizens. Probably not. All right. Hi, Commissioner. Thank you for being with us. It's a pleasure.